avoiding a fare increase next year because at the end of the day, our customers have had to put up with a lot of construction this year. We have, on the TTC have had various projects where we've had to um, put on buses because we've been implementing our new signaling. All good stuff, but it does mean the more difficult journey for customers. So I'm supportive of that uh, recommendation. It is now up to the city manager. Let's see where he goes. Which Do you not think normally 25% would go to um, uh, 25 percent would go to uh, to relief budget, and then 75 percent would go to uh, capital. Mm -hmm. And Howard Mosco said this is somewhat short-sighted to put all the 47 for a fare freeze because eventually fares will go up again, yes. and this 47 could go to the capital to help build new tracks, do you know, 20 different things. Well, at the end of the day, this was operating money, not capital money. So uh, there will be a discussion to be had with the city manager, uh, and I will be um, certainly supportive of, of some kind of fair relief for customers next year. But having said that, I don't believe that all of the 47 million will go towards that. There may be some residue. For example, this the TTC is still $3 million short of uh, its budget from the last budget round. We had $3 million unfunded yet to find, point number one. And point number two, the, uh, the actual customer number of riders is down this year. It's actually up over last year, but it's slightly less than what we forecast. So I think there's a number of potential um, valid reasons to uh, to award that money back to the TTC. If there is a surplus, though, normally uh, the money, whether it's operating, would go to capital. A lot of 75% of this capital does. Well, it would. And at the end of the day, let's not forget, the TTC has a $2.7 billion deficit in its long-term funding. So $47 million is a lot of money in anyone's in anyone's terminology, but the real need is to fund that $2.7 $7 billion dollars uh, for the next 10 years. So that's that's the, the primary need in terms of capital expenditure. If in the short term though we can use operating money that wasn't required to provide some relief for customers who have had a rough time of it over the past few months due to construction, I'm supportive of that. Hey, uh, one of your drivers, one of your drivers left the bus in the wild and caught on well, that we've certainly uh, spoken with that driver, and I'm not going to comment on the actual specifics of that. But let's just remember that was a very unusual circumstance. We have now got to the bottom of it, and it was an unfortunate miscommunication between the driver who was being relieved and the person he thought was the relief driver. So obviously we followed that up. We don't want that to happen. I've made a point with my uh, management team of reinforcing the rules on not just buses, but on streetcars and on subways that vehicles are not to be left unattended. At the end of the day, we move 1.7 million customers a day, and most of those journeys go completely without incident. So this was unfortunate. It was one incident too many, but that's all it was. I want to, ask you to clarify the comments from before. I want to ask you to clarify the comments from before the meeting about the downtown relief line. When I say downtown relief line, I mean a tunnel line, a subway underground, downtown relief line. Will that still be necessary if a plan such as John Tory's smart track goes ahead? Well, I believe that the, the overriding need for a, a relief line of some sort has not gone away and that, that still remains a priority for the TTC. Having said that, we at the TTC have always advocated better use of the go lines. They're, they're a very useful resource uh, and so we're supportive of any um, means of uh, electrifying those lines to provide uh, more capacity through an existing corridor already. But for me, the, the priority still remains a downtown relief line. So, so but electrifying and optimizing is the go course. Does it or can it really remove the need for a tunnel downtown relief line? Or does well, it have to be done as one of two things? Ultimately, any additional capacity is welcome in the city. We all know that the TTC is carrying greater rider numbers than ever. That, that number is predicted to rise uh, up to a point in 2031, where the southbound Young Line will be completely overwhelmed. So for that reason, we say that a relief line is necessary. If in the interim, uh, other measures can be, can be uh, undertaken to address congestion, such as better use of the go lines, such as automatic train control on the uh, young university line, such as rocket trains with the greater capacity that they attract, then we fully support that. But a tunnel down to relief line will still ultimately be necessary. Well, we be uh, absolutely, we believe that a relief line to provide relief in an alternate downtown or a north-south route uh, to complement the young line, that is a priority and that remains so. Good and you mentioned the of the Sorry, the electrification. Yes. Put that off of it. Could we buy some time if they electrify the GO system and optimize its capacity? Well, I, I don't think it's much of a time scale. I mean, electrification will certainly help on the GO lines because electric 
electrification does allow you to run more trains for the simple reason that um, electric trains have greater uh, acceleration and braking profiles and are able to move uh, move away from stops more quickly than diesel hauled uh, locomotion. Um, but the ultimately, we still believe all the figures show and all of our studies show and the downtown relief study that we did some time ago still shows that whatever you do, there still is a need to add capacity in the um, in that critical corridor to relieve you on the floor station and to relieve pressure on the young line. That hasn't gone away. That remains our number one priority. And your thoughts quickly just on a mayoral candidate passing a motion, so you're putting forward a motion today and helping her, you know, her, her election platform. I don't comment on the uh, the politics, I leave that to the politicians, but I think it's a good meeting today. Uh, obviously there's a lot of, a uh, lot more debate to come. The stops quickly, um, basically nothing was so much decided to do in the stops, so they're going to go back, look at them, and reconvene. On, on, on well, I wouldn't put it stops. quite like that. There were there were some stops that were non-contentious. So what I'm pleased about is those stops that were, that were non-contentious. Uh, the council or the commission rather did vote that had to approve the fact that we can now proceed with removal of those stops. It was only those few that were contentious with particular councillors that we agreed to take away and, and consider elsewhere. Let's remember why we're doing this. It's for two reasons. One, uh, to maintain customer safety, but also uh, at the end of the day, we are here to provide a rapid transit service, rapid mass transit service, and where stops are too close together, um, we believe that that uh, adversely impacts upon journey time. So the, the non-contentious stops we're going to proceed with in 2015. I'm sorry, sir. Do, do you know how many were, were uh, voted on, unanimously said, let's just get rid of them now? Uh, well, including the Sunday stops, is around 70 stops, and the contentious ones from memory is around 12. So, so those we, 12 are gone for sure. No, no, the, 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 oh, the, 70, the, 70, the still, 70 are gone, that includes the Sunday stops. The, the contentious uh, stops were, it were amounted to about 12. So we'll talk to the councillors about it. At the end of the day, we do want to properly consult, but let's just remember we're doing this for valid reason to speed up transit, and I think that's what most people in the city want. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We hit the revenue, but at the same time, does it also maybe good because of congestion and capacity issues? It can kind of ease that that kind of pressure, that kind of. Um, well, I, I mean, I don't want there to be less people using the system. If that's your question, we want to attract people to public transit. That's why we're bringing in bigger buses, bigger streetcars, um, why we've brought in the rocket trains, which carry more people. So, with, with, we, you know, we are about moving the masses. That's that's our business. Um, so, uh, am I uh, concerned at the moment? I, I, I think if the if the the, the, the the slowdown in numbers continues much longer, that will become a concern. At the moment, it's still recoverable for the year. Thank you. Can I just ask you something completely unrelated, and this, these guys won't be interested in it? Um, in, in many, many times during the Scarborough Transit debate, you were asked whether it should be a subway or LRT, and you always said, you know, the ridership is on the cusp, but it could justify either option. Um, but that was the 14,000 figure you were referring to was on the cusp, right. Uh, what's the gray zone there? Like, what's the number above which it sort of, it kind of has to be a subway and below which it doesn't, it kind of has to be an LRT. Um, anything north of 9,000 passengers uh, per hour, you will be looking to, you, you're on the cusp of beginning to get into subway territory. So uh, it's not an exact science, uh, but my point was we can support a subway, although we, we originally signed up to an LRT, we can support a subway because you're beginning to get towards the numbers that justify a subway and you will be glad that you built it if your numbers were pessimistic and otherwise you underestimated. Because there are the two figures for you, there's the 9,500 and the 14,000. So even if it's the lower one, that's still... A it's beginning <laughs> to get towards subway territory. I mean, it's, it's getting towards the upper limits of LRT. And so where would be the lower limits of subway? 9,000? Or are you saying um, that it's getting close to getting so entering close subway? To, getting close to, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the boundaries, around sort of nine and a half, ten thousand. you're beginning to get into subway territory. Okay. But a, an LRT can accommodate more than that, yeah. but the, the judgment call is uh, how confident are you that the figures won't be way higher than that, in which case you will wish you built that higher order transit. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.